uh, fellow Ugandans here in Uganda and everywhere else in the world. I bring you revolutionary greetings wherever you are, and I thank you for the massive support that you have given to us for these past three years, which have been years full of challenges. I take this opportunity to also announce that we, what we are witnessing right now is the launch of a very critical phase in our struggle to liberate ourselves from a dictatorship which has crippled our country for almost four decades. A dictatorship which has strangled our economy with a massive corruption, patronage, high cost of living, a sick healthcare system, a broken down healthcare system, etc, etc. For a very long time now, we have lamented and cried about the government which works for only the few and excludes the majority. Well, today, we close the book of lamentation and open the book of acts. It is time for action, action that will put an end to the injustices, the oppression, and the impunity in our beautiful country, Uganda. Countrymen and women, I come before you not as the most qualified, not as the most experienced, but I come before you as the most committed to lead this liberation, to lead the people of Uganda out of slavery. Countrymen and women, for the last 58 years, our nation has suffered. So many problems have befallen our nation, but key among them has been dictatorships. Each one trying so much to outdo the one before it in violence, in looting, and in plunder. We have not witnessed a peaceful transfer of power from one leader to another since our country became independent in 1962. Unfortunately, friends, 15 years ago, when we had the chance to witness the first peaceful transition of power, 15 years ago, President Museveni, through greed, he denied our nation an opportunity of experiencing a peaceful transition of power from one leader to another, from one generation to another. And as if that was not evil enough, only three years ago, three years ago, this greed caused him to act in the most shameful manner and remove the last safeguard in form of age limit from our constitution. Like Idi Amin, Museveni declared himself president for life in our country, Uganda. Well, little did he know that God will one day raise a generation that will not take that. Little did he know that God will raise unexpected people from unexpected places. So, to you, Mr. Museveni, since you have failed to control your greed and lust for power, our generation is determined to save you from yourself and stop your 35 year old dictatorship. The liberation and social economic transformation of our country cannot be achieved unless we first remove the big obstacle, and that is Museveni, who has undermined all institutions of state and instead institutionalized corruption in Uganda. And of course, he has institutionalized human rights violations. Fellow Ugandans, I'm offering myself as a candidate of the highest office in this land, as a representative of the oppressed Ugandans. My background is well known to you, all of you, born hustling and born to hustling parents, raised in the ghettos of Kamocha, but fortunate enough to raise on top courtesy of my talent and hard work. It is now this background that has enabled me to understand the struggles of the common Ugandans. 35 years ago, Museveni started feeding off taxpayers' money and living in absolute abundance. Him and his cronies are completely detached from the common person, and no wonder they mock our people because they have impoverished them, battered them, and suppressed them. And that is why this election, in this election, I am representing the weak, I am representing the poor, I am representing the downtrodden, I am representing those that have been excluded from a system which works only for a few, and of course, sitting and stepping on the necks of the many. I am representing the overtaxed business people. I am representing the parents that have sold all their land to take their children to school, and now their children cannot find jobs. 
I am representing the border border riders who are persecuted every day after being made to pay large sums of money. I am representing those wives and mothers that cannot afford maternal health. I am representing the business person who borrows money at high rates and cannot figure out how to pay it. I'm representing the local suppliers who were kicked out of government tenders simply because they don't know anybody in government. I am representing poor Ugandans who have lost land to the powerful land grabbers, and many of them are in government. Yes, those who cannot get justice because justice under Museveni is for sale. I am representing the poor soldiers, the police officers who are so oppressed, yet they are commanded to beat and kill citizens who they are supposed to protect simply because they must appease the rich. Those rich and the mighty are the ones we are standing, uh, standing against. In this election, gentlemen and ladies, I am representing the hardworking people of Usoga that have been deliberately kept poor by the NRM regime. I am representing the great people of Acholi whose land is being stolen in broad daylight by the regime and its cooperatives. I am representing the people of Lango who have been deliberately marginalized and disempowered for the past three decades. They have been deliberately marginalized and squeezed. I am representing the impoverished people of Karamoja who are kept under the barrel of the gun while their gold, their copper, their cobalt, and iron ores are stolen away by the rich and mighty. I am representing the people of Unyoro who live and grow cheap crops on the oil that, has, that is theirs. Yes, their oil has been kept in the dark because they are looked at as they don't have a right to know what is happening in their land. I say this again, never again will soldiers be forced to become police officers like we see it today because they had the option of joining the police, but they decided to join the army. In our plan, the better option is not to recruit from the police, from the army to the police, but instead to improve and empower the police so that they can become better and operate better. The children of the soldiers and the police officers will be entitled to free education up to university. There is no greater sacrifice, ladies and gentlemen, than serving in uniform. And it will be our deliberate plan to ensure that our men and women in uniform in dignity. I firmly believe we do this, our armed, I strongly believe that if we do this, then our armed men and women in uniform will have respect for the citizens. In a new Uganda, there will be mutual love and respect between those in uniform and the ordinary citizen of Uganda. When I become president, we shall introduce a contract arrangement for the security officers. In other countries, one can serve in the military, and after some time, they resign when they are still young, and of course they resign with a better retirement package. But today, they are all tied, even when they want to resign, they cannot. One should be proud to serve in the military or in the police and resign. So we shall make it on contract so that we make that job so nice for you to work. Number two, in the new Uganda, there will be access to affordable quality health care for all Ugandans. And this will be priority in terms of budgetary allocations. Effective supervision, of course, will be there, but health can be fixed. I'm not here to, to preach as a professor or a very experienced person in health in the health sector. But I want to tell you, only following the Abuja declaration of raising the budgetary allocation to 15% of the national budget, we are going to have a perfect health care system. And yes, we will do it. Number three, education. We all know that education is what paves way for a new. Maybe if I did not get the rare opportunity to education, I would still be in. But now that I'm here, it has to work for everybody. It has to be transformation for every get to you. I've told you before about our education, and I will emphasize that we'll have the four is that will focus on in our education and empower the academics we will arts we will empower the athletics and of course we shall empower agriculture we shall
deal with uh, unemployment and of course have a whole lot of job creation. I might not have to speak on that, but I can guarantee you that by 2025, I've created million jobs and I signed because I will be president. Number five, agriculture. Well, agriculture remains the backbone of our economy. And even if it is being disrespected and given no attention, our government intends to zone this country and ensure that each zone has a cash crop and a food crop. Friends, this is not rocket science. It is not going to begin with my presidency. It has been done before. It is a question of waking it up. When I was growing up, every region of this country had a cash crop and a food crop. We don't have that anymore. Why? Because the regime has different priorities, among which, or number one of which, is retaining power. But when I'm president, you are going to see that with your own eyes. And yes, we shall ensure access to proper input and promote good agricultural practices, and of course, value addition. We shall revamp coffee production, because when I was growing up, coffee production is what put us on the world map. I can guarantee you that our government will ensure that by 2025, Uganda, expect, uh, Uganda exports 50 million bags of coffee. 50 million. And I sign because I will be president. Science and technology. I cannot talk so much about this, friends. Many of you are members of my generation, and you know how this is going to revamp our country, especially if we are united by conviction. A people united can never be defeated. 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 Yes, and also I want you to know that nothing can stop an idea whose time has come. Our, our story as NUP and as people power and also my individual story, friends, is a story of commitment, resilience, and never giving up. It is an example that challenges only strengthen the prepared. Let us come together under the umbrella of a new Uganda. And yes, much together, all of us, men and women, young and old, rich and poor, towards that new Uganda. As I conclude, I want you to know that we are aware that Museveni prides himself in his record of rigging elections. And of course, that the Electoral Commission has always been helping him in achieving that. Well, today, let me send a message to him and Mr. Biabakama. Just like I've just told him in his face, I will tell him again publicly that it is in your best interest not to mess with the people of Uganda. I say this again, Mr. Museveni and Mr. Biabakama, it is in your best interest not to mess with the people of Uganda. Because if you do so, you know the cost will be high. So finally, to all the Ugandans out there in Uganda and abroad, we rally you not to treat this as an ordinary election, but as a revolutionary election. The stakes are high. The, tran the transition is in our face. Freedom is staring us in the face, ladies and gentlemen. It is time. The time is now, and we have entered the ring. I say we have entered the ring, and we are not coming out. We only await to raise our fist in victory. Because this is the time, ladies and gentlemen. Kati tu simbu day. I say kati tu simbu day. This is it. This is a battle. A battle between the past and the future. I say this again, this is a battle between the past and the future, between the old and the new, between slavery and freedom. This is the defining moment. So, I want you to know, Ugandans, that people, I mean, power is in your hands, and it is this time where you choose to trust that power in a person that you decide. This is a mission to freedom. I say this again, this is a mission to freedom, not a mere election. We are removing a dictator. Say that after me. We are removing a dictator. 
and we are doing this peacefully and constitutionally and legally because we know that our laws provide for that. If we were born and there was no constitution in Uganda, we would bow to slavery. But when I read the constitution, it guarantees all this. When I remember what President Museveni said when he was my age, he said, what do you do when a regime has closed all avenues of peaceful change? Well, we have an avenue of peaceful change. And we know the world is watching us. We are going to be free. I say we are going to be free. And now, very, 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 very finally, I want to pay tribute to all the people that have been struggling, those that came before us, those that have lived before us. We are alive to the fact that we stand on your shoulders. We are alive to the fact that you inspired us to see the truth. And we call all upon you to stand by that truth. I want to respect Dr. Paulo Kawanga Semogere. I want to respect Dr. Chizabe CJ. I want to respect Dr. Miriam Matembe and all other leaders who have paid the price in different ways. And of course, I want to salute all the comrades that have been murdered in cold blood in our pursuit for freedom. We stand by you. Your blood is still watering the tree of freedom. And I can guarantee you, comrades, wherever you lie, that we shall be free or we shall die trying to be free. I thank you for God and my country. When the struggle is over, we shall wear the victor's crown. We shall wear the victor's crown. We shall wear the victor's crown. When the struggle is over, we shall wear the victor's crown in a new Uganda. People power. power, power. Our power. People power. NUP. Everywhere. Everywhere. NUP.